All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, hope everyone's starting to uh, get ready. All right. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to the stream this evening. Now, today is um, Thursday, January 12th, 2023. Now, so, so today I want to talk about a uh, perspective article uh, published by Dr. Paul Offit in the New England Journal of Medicine, which was just published yesterday. Okay, yesterday. I was reading it before uh, bed last night. Uh, yeah, that was my bedtime reading. How sad was that? Um, and anyway, so many key points of this article resonated with me and what I've emphasized in my past videos since June of last year. So I feel like I have to share this article with all of you as soon as possible. So let's look at uh, the screen here. All right, so this article its title is Bivalent COVID-19 Vaccines, A Cautionary Tale by Dr. Paul Offit. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about Paul Offit, uh, he is the director of the Vaccine Education Center uh, and an attending physician in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Now, he is also uh, a current member of the FDA Vaccine and Related Biological Product Advisory Committee. He has been invited by uh, various uh, other doctors on YouTube uh, in other interviews. So uh, a lot of you perhaps already have an idea of who he is. Now, he has been present in all of the committee meetings uh, uh, when they discussed the safety safety efficacy data of the COVID nineteen vaccine, so, uh, so just be clear, Doctor Offit is the vaccine expert and one of the most pro vaccination physician scientists you can find in the U.S. But what did he write in this article? Now, if you are in a rush, let's go to the last message, last sentence. This is his message. I believe we should stop trying to prevent all symptomatic infections in healthy young people by boosting them with vaccines containing mRNA from strains that might disappear a few months later. Uh, the catch here is, well, have we been seeing strains that keep popping up and disappearing a few months later? So far, yes. So far, yes. So, uh, And this trend has not shown any signs of stopping. So... Uh, when the virus keep mutating like this, is the current strategy really viable, really logical to prevent all symptomatic infections in healthy young people? So that is his message there. Well, um, I don't know if you are surprised by his message or not, but I'm not. Okay, now, let's have a quick uh, rundown of his key points in this article and just you know, what he really means, uh, okay? All right, now, so I've highlighted some of those. This is a pretty uh, easy reading, but I'll, I'll break it down. Now, he re uh, started by stating some historical facts about the virus, the development of the pandemic, the vaccine, how the virus has been mutating into more contagious uh, variants, first having this uh, D614G uh, mutations on the spike, and then you have alpha, delta, and then since November 2021, there's been Omicron, and for more than a year, we have Omicron subvariants that are more and more contagious. Uh, all right, so that was the, the beginning historical background. Now, he clearly stated early in the article, I highlighted in red, four vaccines against SARS-CoV-2, a mucosal infection with a short incubation period. Protection from severe disease is only reasonable and attainable goal. Now, there's no ambiguity there. He stated very clearly that this is a disease that is not reasonable if we want to prevent all infections, all right? Now, some of you could argue that COVID is a systematic or systemic disease infection because it attacks beyond the respiratory systems, okay? You have autopsy evidence that finding virus pieces everywhere in the body. Okay, that is true. 
But the key here is that the infection starts from mucosal membrane and mostly from the nasal mucosa. Now you could get it from the eye, you can get it from the mouth, but mostly people breathe in. Okay, breathe in. Now, in fact, a new article, um, a separate article published last week in the journal Cell by a Stanford medicine professor precisely pinpointed the location of where the virus enters inside the nose. So that's a separate article. We could talk about it at a later time. But so, so mucosal is a fact. Okay, mucosal infection, uh, that's where it began, is, is a fact. And the vaccine we currently have um, to stop infection is not a realistic goal. And I believe this idea is shared among, uh, among many uh, scientists who assess the situation with a more neutral perspective. And what I mean is that the scientists who are not affiliated with the industry or the officials, right? All right, so let's continue with the article. Now, the article continues with events revolving around the bivalent vaccine development. Um, and so near the end of June 2022, last year, uh, the FDA invited Pfizer, Moderna, present bivalent booster results to the advisory committee. Now, at that time, they had developed the BA1, okay, BA1 bivalent booster and saw only 1.5 to 1.7 times higher neutralizing antibody production in humans than those who got the monovalent booster. Um, at the time, Dr. Offit and one other committee member voted against updating the booster because there was just not enough evidence to show that bivalent booster was better than monovalent at that time. Now, but the FDA um, decided otherwise. They authorized the bivalent vaccine booster. Not only that, they wanted the BA45 here in the U.S., not the BA1 booster, which uh, is the version people in UK and some other countries are getting. Now, what happened next is, is history, right? And um, notice that one sentence that uh, Dr. Offit used in his article, a series of rapid fire, rapid fire policy decision fo followed, all right? So I think this is a very strong language, really. Um, should public health policy be rapid firing, right? Um, so by mid-October, the officials basically um, recommends that everyone five and above get the bivalent booster, but there were no human data, okay? Not even human immunological data, uh, immunogenicity data at that time. Um, so what was the push? Why was there put the push? Because millions of doses were already purchased, money spent, money spent. Now, Dr. Offit followed up by referencing several articles published by academic researchers that showed the bivalent booster was not superior to the monovalent booster in terms of both the um, antibody response and as well as cellular response. Now, all of these papers are already published, peer-reviewed and published in journal. Okay. Now, so... But but wait, if you have good memory, you know, uh, didn't Pfizer release their human data uh, in early November saying that, well, the bivalent vaccine had four times higher antibody responses? Well, um, I streamed on that topic on November 10th, if you want to go back and look, and I criticize the White House doctor, right, tweeted loud and clear on his Twitter, saying the bivalent vaccine was four times better. I said it should be four times higher antibody response. Um, so here comes the drama and between the officials and the expert, and you're ready? Okay. So what is the drama? Okay, this is an NBC News interview article. Uh, they interviewed a FDA spokesperson, okay, and she said that Dr. Offit's data used to support his argument was selective, and FDA disagreed with Dr. Offit's assessment. Okay, so um, they, the FDA official message is continue to boost or age regardless. Okay, well, so was she right? Was Dr. Offit selective about what he put on his article? Um, 
I think she was right. Okay, Doctor Offit was selective, but wait a second, what did he select? He selected peer-reviewed research papers from academic researchers who had no connections with industry. Okay, he excluded non-peer-reviewed industry data that are released in press release. Okay, that the official tweeted very rapidly on Twitter. And to support their policy, okay. Now here you can see the difference, and you don't need me to tell you. Someone is not getting a paycheck from the government or the industry has way better scientific judgment than someone who does, and we have seen it multiple times by now.、Um, now remember, Doctor Offit is one of the biggest pro-vaccination scientists you can find in the country, and he criticized the rapid firing policy that. Lack scientific basis. All right. So, well, let's go back to the article. So, why was there a suboptimal result from the bivalent vaccine? The most likely explanations, according to his word again, is you know a story that we've talked about a lot of times, is imprinting or. Immune imprinting. Okay, but the, basically, the body responded to parts of the spike protein that were shared、uh, by BA four five. Okay, so there's some、uh, you know specific term he used in the article. Epitopes, epitopes, just like a tip of the spike protein that are that are common among all strain, and the body failed to respond to the new mutated parts、uh, from the BA four five sub. Variant. So, so this is、uh, you know something we've talked about multiple times here on the channel.、Uh, so now, okay, moving forward, well, we don't care about immunological data anymore. Okay, you could argue that we care about clinical outcomes. But remember, all of the clinical outcomes are retrospective, you know, cohort study. There's no clinical trials、uh, for BA.4.5 bivalent vaccines. Okay, there's no clinical trial data.、Um, Dr. Offit、uh, referenced CDC data. Okay, this is a little bit old by now, but it was like a November data.、Uh, you know, it showed、uh, the bivalent booster provided some modest protections within the first two months of receiving the booster dose. Okay, ranging from twenty-eight percent to thirty-one, forty-three to fifty-six, depending on when was your last dose or when was your last infection, basically. Okay, so that protection、uh, is expected to be short-lived based on. All of our previous doses, all of the experience. So the fact that a, a, you know protection against severe illness is still here, as I've always emphasized,、um, the booster is best for the vulnerable population, and this message is shared by Dr. Offit as well in his article. Well, who are they specifically? Older adults. People with multiple coexisting conditions that put them at high risk for severe illness, and those who are immunocompromised. So there's a good percentage of people there. You know, when you're looking at multiple coexisting conditions, older adults are immunocompromised, and we have also looked at some of the、uh, trends. Okay,、uh, last week during my、uh, Sunday video, that well, the XBB 1.5 is causing more hospitalizations in 75 and above. So that It's not、uh, something that we should be really arguing. That's not happening. Okay, it is happening. All right. So now, if you have followed my videos for a while, you know that you know I made made multiple videos related to you know the lack of strong evidence supporting preventing all symptomatic disease in young people. So that's a common theme, and that is not just me talking. Okay, clearly.、Uh, now, so. One thing I need to point out、uh, from Doctor Offit's article is that the whole article he really focused on the benefit side of the story. When we look at vaccine, we look at risk versus benefit.、Uh, he tried to not stir up too much, you know, in in the pond.、Uh, it's just focusing on benefit. Now he didn't even bring up myocarditis risk in young males. There are new articles coming out. Almost very frequently, that that's another piece of consideration that you know that he didn't he didn't get into. So now, what about other countries? Are they doing something anything different?、Um, so、uh, there are something different happening at some other places of the world.、Um, just take 
German, for example, okay, uh, some European countries, Germany are no longer recommending continuous boosting in healthy youngster. Okay, um, so why do U.S. officials are not changing the narrative? That's beyond me. That's beyond me. Okay, something for you to think about. You you can express yourself in the comment sections and let let us know what you think. Um, so. That's the short article. Uh, that's that's why that was my bedtime reading. Uh, just to chime in a little bit, you know, you know, some of the newer developments. Um, talking about the industry, a report said Moderna, okay, was hiding data from the vaccine committee members during their June meeting, and even though the FDA, CDC had the data, they chose not to look at it before decision making. Now I know a lot of you here from my channel, watch Dr. Mobin's channel as well, and he already covered this topic last night on his channel, so I won't repeat that anymore, but um, it really just, you know, uh, shakes the, the, the faith. I mean, um, so the bottom line here is that what I want to wrap up is that the industry and the officials within these uh, two, three years, you know, have not only destroyed the trust of the public, or a lot of people, and not everyone, a, a, a large segment of the public, but also the faith of some reputable scientists, such as Dr. Offit, right? Um, now, I want to be clear that uh, now I'm not trying to compare myself to Dr. Offit. I'm nowhere near his level. He's a vaccine expert. I'm a science communicator at the best, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I read articles. Uh, uh, I'm not a vaccine expert, but it is not difficult for any properly trained scientist to spot the problems by now, really. And uh, people who are not talking about it, they either have some tie or I think it's just they're afraid to talk about it. So, um, and I hope, you know, with me and other doctors on YouTube that has more neutral voice, um, I think we can provide, you know, we can provide some unbiased voice for everyone to make correct decisions for themselves at by this point. And and to be honest, right, the CDC keep referencing by now almost everybody have exposure to either the virus or the vaccine. We've gained some immunity, and a lot of us have experienced the disease. Okay, doesn't seem to be too bad. All right now. I'm not saying that's everyone. Someone is going to develop severe disease, is going to die from the disease, and they need to make uh, judgment decisions for themselves to protect themselves. I know that's that's what I emphasized. Okay, here. All right. So um, that's you know everything that I want to say. I want to just have a quick look um, uh, of the 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 message here. Uh, the the, the the chat room I, I think um so uh you know it's um, unfortunately you know uh a lot of the uh the decisions right now is you know there's some monetary tie to it and uh that that's unfortunate and um I don't know anything can change that. All right, um, that's all for tonight, and uh, I hope everyone have a good rest of the night or day if you are watching from somewhere else in the world. But for me, it's six twenty ish, and uh, I plan to have my dinner. Okay, take good care, everyone. And uh, again, lastly, uh, all of the links uh, to what I've talked about, you know, some of my past videos, they're they're all in the description box. Okay, uh, take good care. Bye bye.